Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Steven Breach coming to you here today with a uh, DVD review that I uh, honestly finally have pulled into my collection after all of these years. Uh, this is the Lost Episodes of the XWF. This is honestly a DVD um, that was released. You could go online and buy it from the XWF website. I, I remember seeing this sitting on the shelves, laughing about it um, in, in Best Buy's. Um, the XWF, basically, we're going to go over what it was, what it was supposed to be, why it was, what it was. It makes no sense. You, you look over the, uh, the production, um, that was put into this. This is not basically your, you know, high school gym, just getting an indie show, filming it and putting it out on a DVD. This was supposed to be WCW 2.0. Uh, a man who had had some history of, of coming up with some brands that made some money. Kevin Harrington, in 2001, we're looking at the same year that WCW closed, um, that was bought by WWF, laid money out on the table. Kevin Harrington, never heard about him in, in wrestling. You go to his Wikipedia page, he has a bunch of hits and misses in the world of uh, making money. XWF, nowhere on the table. Um, but uh, he basically threw the money out there and went to some wrestlers and asked if they wanted to run a wrestling company. Let me know if you are creating a, a new wrestling brand um, that you want to throw big money out uh, to film um, you know, your, your TV show down in Florida, uh, basically to film a pilot that you're going to go around and, and see if you can pit, get like a major cable brand to bite. Um, if you're going to be able to find out if, you know, maybe you can put your wrestling show out into syndication. Are you going to Jimmy Hart, the Nasty Boys, and Greg the Hammer Valentine? I don't think so. But somehow, um, these four wrestlers, uh, it's debated. Some places that says that Hulk Hogan is part of the management team. Some places, um, you know, just say that he just showed up the day of the... Uh, the shooting uh, felt like he was bored and, and ended up getting into the ring. He only wrestled one match. Uh, he, he would have thought that it would have been like a TNA situation. If Hulk was really involved in the XWF, I think that he would have been more of a figure. Um, you know, they brought in Sable, Raina Mero, to be the CEO on camera of this company. They brought in Roddy Piper to be the commissioner. I would have, I would have thought that Hulk would have had an on-screen role a lot like that instead of being featured as a wrestler who only wrestled um, in one match. Very high production on these um, matches. You've got Tony Schiavone, who had just left um, WCW. Uh, you had Jerry Lawler, who had um, walked out on the WWF. He quit um, over the, the booking of his then-wife, The Cat. What was it? Stacy Carter, I believe is what her name is. Um, you know, they are both at these uh, TV tapings. Uh, but unfortunately, he's one of the guys. This is filmed in November of 2001. What else happens in November of 2001? Survivor Series. Um, the invasion comes to an end. Um, the, the Raw after um, Survivor Series, they bring out Paul Heyman. They fire him. They replace him on commentary. Uh, with Jerry the King Lawler. Um, so he, he's like the first domino to fall, um, basically, in what's going on. But big, big money. I mean, honestly, you got one big match right out of the gate. You've got um, Hulk Hogan versus Mr. Perfect. Uh, Mr. Perfect brings out uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan, who doesn't play as his manager, but as his agent. One thing, you think that's a big match? I'm a big Hulk Hogan fan. I need to get this. You probably honestly already own it. It's right here. Somehow, WWF bought the rights to that match. They released it on uh, Hulk Hogan, uh, the Ultimate Anthology. I'm sure whatever money they gave um, to, to, to have the match, I believe it's on disc three. Um, right there, whatever money they gave, uh, the XWF was able to keep them running, at least keep their website up for a while. To be able to release these bad boys. Because this DVD was released. 
uh, shoot, where was it, 2006? So only a year after this bad boy is here, uh, when Jimmy Hart is still running the company. Does it make sense how they weren't really able to get anything off the, the, uh, the board? You look at their, um, roster, um, probably the biggest names that's going besides your Hogan and Perfect is, is the Road Warriors, Public Enemy, uh, you got Vampiro, Buff Bagwell, AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Jimmy Snuka works as a manager for his son, Marty Janetti, Horace Hogan, Loki, uh, most known from his work in uh, ROH in Japan, but you might remember him as Caval, uh, the winner of NXT Season 2, Sonny Ono, Kid Cash, Hoofatic Guerrero, Psychosis, Conan, Carlito, Johnny B. Bad, Norman Smiley, The Kiss Demon, Crowbar, and Big Vito. Um, can all be found on these. These are three discs, uh, edited matches, more than likely, probably what was supposed to be the pilots that they were shipping around. But the only problem is they go out, they're, sh they're, they're showing these pilots. I'm sure, you know, TV producers uh, were, you know, wondering, uh, networks were wondering, you know, this roster looks great, but the only problem is the more time that goes on, um, we've already talked about Jerry Lawler left um, Survivor Series. Um, right after that, you've got, um, shoot, who else on here? Hogan shows up in WBF, No Way Out, 2002. Bobby Heenan shows up. Uh, no, 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 Mr. Perfect shows up. The Rumble of 2002. Um, you know, big names, you know, just dropping left and right. Roddy Piper. I'm trying to think when his run was on SmackDown. Uh, Rena Mero ends up going back about that time as well. Um, and then also you've got TNA, who's going to be starting up in May in, of 2002. You're looking at names right off the bat. You've got AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels. Um, I think Loki was involved in TNA in the very beginning. Um, you know, going in there. Uh, and they're not able to replace these names because the TNA jumping on. And you know, you remember those early ones they had Scott Hall there. Um, so you know, big name free agents are, are getting bought up because you're trying to replace as the number two company in the WWF while somebody else is launching, trying to get something going over there as well. Um, honestly, packaging. I, I you know I'm not going to call the slipcover bad because old ass slipcover for some reason. Somebody, maybe they were a Lex Luger fan. You look in there, you're just going to see a whole bunch of blue L's written on there. I got no clue. There's even a check mark on the front. But I'm looking at the back of the actual DVD. They they drew it on here as, as well. Um, is, it, is it the the whole damn thing or just the case? So they just drew it on the case for some reason. If I wanted to get a new case... Um, I could, I'll tell you, honestly, uh, like, like the Undertaker's, I think it's called like Tombstone's Greatest Hits or something close to that. It's a three disc, uh, release by, by WWE at the time. Same kind of packaging. It, it sucks. They just stack the discs right on top of each other. If you think about TV shows, I bought a TV show at Costco. Shoot. I can't remember what it was. News Radio. I think it's like 18 discs. It's packaged basically the same way. It's hard to watch them. It's one of the reasons why I gave up on, on flipping through them because it's hard to juggle through. Like, are you supposed to put one on the bottom when you're done? When you put two in and so three's ready or whatever, they're just going to get mixed up. But your discs don't really have a whole bunch of information on them. Just has the uh, in your face <laughs> written on them if they were in a case that actually displayed the mount they would say something um this time says that each one's about an hour xwf logo on there tv 14 even though that the, the wikipedia thing said that they were trying to make their television uh g rated at the time trying to make it some something like what the wcw was before the um NWO um, Invasion. Um, you look at these matches on here. We've already went through the roster, but we've got uh, Big Vito versus Buff Bagwell. Marty uh, Giannetti. Um, I don't know who Hale is, um, but you got Horace Hogan, Ian Henderson. All right, we got we to start just reading the good ones. <laughs> um, 
Kurt Henning uh, versus Vampiro, Juventud Guerrero and Psychosis against Conan and Ray Gonzalez. Um, you've got um, Jerry Lawler actually wrestles a match. All right. I thought he was just the announcer. Um, <laughs> we've got um, Johnny B. Bad versus Norman Smiley. Uh, the Shane Twins versus the Road Warriors. Um, Kurt Henning uh, versus Buff Bagwell. You've got uh, Horace Hogan versus Josh Matthews. Oh, Josh Matthews just was the was he the runner up winner of um, the first season of Tough Enough at that time. Goes on to be an announcer. I think he's an impact right now. Um, we've got um, AJ Styles versus Kid Cash. Cruiserweight Championship match. Um, shoot. Um, extra match. The extra matches is actually where you're going to get Hogan versus Henning. Uh, it's not even involved in one of the shows. Um, there's like an interview with Hulk Hogan, why he doesn't think that the XWF ever took off. I'm not telling you that this is like a must-have one for your... Um, your DVD collection. I'm just saying this is like they they were trying to pick up where WCW left off. It's one of the reasons I've been looking to get this for a long time. You used to be able to get this used on Amazon for like five bucks. All of a sudden, about two, three years ago, it spiked. And for some reason, it was up to like around $40. And I was like, no way in hell will I ever buy this. Guy had it listed on eBay. Um, he had it for uh, 15 and I played hardball with him. I sent him a couple offers before... Honestly, we, we got down to $14, uh, no shipping. Um, so I'm going to check it out. I, I don't really think anything's going to blow me away. Like, like I said, the, the biggest match that's on here has already been released years ago, and you probably already have it in your collection if you've got this bad boy. So um, I don't know. We'll see what it's like. Listen to Shivani and Lawler uh, call some matches, a team that I never thought I would hear.